In this video clip, we will have a look at cockpits, and especially the history and the development of the cockpits. What you see here is actually the cockpit of the Comet. This is the first jet airliner, and it, it may look familiar to if you compare it with today's general aviation aircraft. But the cockpit is what we nowadays would call an analog cockpit. You see a lot of dials and uh, no, no, uh, no large screens, but this cockpit, even though it's similar to the small airplanes that you might know, allowed people to fly all over the world and uh, navigate all over the world. But to do this, there was a crew of four persons in the cockpit. So not just the two pilots, but also a flight engineer and a navigator, who even had his own little window in the ceiling of the cockpit to use the stars for navigation when necessary. But even later in the, in the Concorde, uh, you see 69 here, the Concorde was the first supersonic airliner, so a very modern aircraft you would see, but the cockpit still mostly dials. And um, if, you, if you look, for instance, at the engine instruments, you see basically that for every parameter of, every of, the of each of the four engines, uh, you have a separate dial. And this was used to indicate uh, the, well, the state of these engines, to monitor if they were okay. And so everything was, in that, in, in that respect, not very different from, uh, from the Comet aircraft. In the 747, it was not very different from the Concorde. Uh, it was developed around the same time, a bit later. Again, many analog dials for, for each of the uh, engines. And there, uh, there was also, next to the two pilots, still a flight engineer on board, whose task it was to monitor the engines and all the parameters, and when necessary, warn the pilots, uh, for instance, that an, an engine was consuming more fuel than, uh, than expected, and something needed to be done, perhaps. So, three persons in the cockpit now, no longer navigator, because that was taken over by automation, uh, but still three persons in an analog cockpit. But then, if we go fast forward to the uh, 80s, end of the 80s, we see the 747-400. And now we see a completely different style of cockpit, and this is called the glass cockpit. And let's, let's uh, explore the different elements of a glass cockpit using this cockpit. I could do this, that by using this slide, but I think it's much nicer to actually go find a cockpit and sit in one and show you how it works from this cockpit. I'm sitting here in the cockpit of a Boeing 747-400 to show you the main components of a glass cockpit, a modern glass cockpit. And let's, so let's go through this cockpit from, from top to bottom. Let's start in the ceiling here. Here you see the last three rows of the, the circuit breakers, which basically are fuses, but there are also switches that allow you to completely switch off a system and do a cold reboot in case of an emergency. Normally you wouldn't touch them, and they're only there as, as fuses. Then the forward part of the uh, uh, overhead panel has the system, the overhead system panel with which we can control all the systems on board of the aircraft. The hydraulics, the electronics, the air conditioning, fuel systems, fire extinguishers, all these systems can be controlled with the overhead panel. A bit lower we have the glare shield with two panels. Um, the center one is the mode control panel, or sometimes referred to as flight mode panel when you're in an, uh, an Airbus. And the mode control panel allows you to directly set the parameters for the basic modes of the autopilot. For instance, the altitude, vertical speed, heading, or speed, speed or Mach number. In this way, we can control the autopilot directly. There is also the option to hook it up to the computer, the navigation computer, the flight management system in the cockpit, and then the flight management system will do these settings for you. But you can also do it yourself manually using this panel. Next to the mode control panel, on both sides we find display control panels uh, to set which systems we can uh, check with the displays and to change the settings of the primary flight display and the navigation display. For instance, what we can see on our map display, the navigation display, we can select different features and can also declutter the display again by deselecting them. So mode control panel, display control panel. Then, lower we see the actual displays. That's the, the electronic flight instrument, EFIS displays. And let's go from right to left here. Here, a bit hard for you to see behind the control column is the primary flight display. 
from a distance it looks a bit like an artificial horizon and indeed it does show the attitude of the, uh, the aircraft in the center. But there's much more information on the primary flight display. You will find all the primary flight data there like speed, altitude, vertical speed and also heading. And in the top of the primary flight display, we can also see which modes are engaged by the autopilot, whether it's in altitude select or speeding select or heading hold mode. And uh, this can also mean the mode of the flight director. Then to the left of, uh, of the primary flight display, we find the navigation display, which is currently set in map mode, because it shows a map and also shows our position on this map. We can also watch the, the route which we, uh, which we follow and see whether our aircraft follows the route. In this way we can monitor the autopilot and the flight management system or fly along the route ourselves. This navigation display has basically replaced the fourth person in the cockpit because in the past there used to be a navigator in the cockpit. In the center we see two displays, which are the uh, ECAS displays, engine indicator and crew alerting system, and they basically have replaced the, uh, uh, the flight engineer, which means that there are now only two pilots in the, in the cockpit and no longer two pilots and a flight engineer. This shows the engine parameters, the, the four bars you can see, but it also shows warning and caution messages, and we can select different systems on this display. All the systems which are controlled by the overhead panel, we can check with, this, uh, with these displays. But in case the electronic displays fail, we can still control the plane with the standby instruments. They are basically old-fashioned analog displays which will still work when we don't have the electronic uh, instrument system. Then in the uh, forward part of the pedestal, next to the lower ECA screen, we find two CDUs, a bit hard for you to see, but it's basically the same unit as you find here. It's a CDU, command and display unit, which is a screen and a keyboard, allow you to select a route or and change the route, edit the route, and in, uh, in this way control what the autopilot will do when we put the autopilot in LNAV or VNAV mode, which means it is controlled by the flight management system. So the CDU is the way to control the flight management system. Then we have the throttle segment, which in the center the throttle levers for the four engines. And next to it the flap lever and the speed brake lever, which which we can set speed brake and flaps. Then here we find the radio control panels to select the frequency on the, on the radios. The extra CDU. This CDU is mainly used for ACARs, uh, for the messages, sending messages and receiving messages from the company. Then even lower we find, for instance, the trim panel, uh, with which we can set, uh, control the trim settings of the aircraft. And we find even a little printer here, which allows us to print, for instance, the ACARs messages or meteorological information, which we can also receive via the ACAR. These are the main components you will find in any glass cockpit nowadays. So here we see the A320 cockpit, which is also a glass cockpit, and it was around the same time, actually slightly earlier. Airbus was uh, the pioneer with the, the glass cockpit. And you see that the main difference uh, that first strikes you is the, the color difference. Airbus uses a gray cockpit, where Boeing uses a brown cockpit. And also the, the, the choice for the, the column instead of a side stick is the difference between Boeing and Airbus. And in Airbus you have the, the side stick. If we now want to have a look what has changed since this these revolution basically to the glass cockpit, which was introduced with the A320 and 747, we uh, best have a look at the A380. And if we zoom in, you can see a, a little more differences than, uh, than with the previous glass cockpits. First of all, we see larger screens, and you also see on the navigation display more information being displayed. And there are also new elements which you didn't find in the previous cockpits. For instance, next to the throttle levers, you see two sort of bulb-shaped grey things which are armrests. But behind this armrest is actually a tracker ball, which allows you to control a cursor on the various displays. Also, in front of the pilot, you see a keyboard, and this keyboard is used for instance, for the electronic flight back system. Because if you look all the way right, behind, behind the side stick, uh, 
you see a screen, and this is called the electronic flight bag. Because it contains maps, taxi maps, you see in this case an airport map being displayed. And this replaces a large bag with documentation, which normally had to be taken by the pilots. And this screen is now controlled via this keyboard. Other noticeable differences between all Airbus and Boeing cockpits is the primary flight control. With Boeing, we saw a control column, but Airbus uses, as we can see, a side stick, left and right, with which the aircraft is controlled in case of manual flight. And this concludes the first clip on cockpits. In the next presentation, we will have a look at the instrumentation which we find in all these cockpits, and we will investigate how the basic instruments work.